go. So during this section, I'm going to be breaking down 110 meter hurdles into four different levels. When you separate each of the components, it allows the coaches and the athletes to spend more time with skill, skill fundamentals, um, skill development, rhythm development, and then also mental development. Each of these components play a huge role in hurdling, not only for the athlete, but also for the coaches. It's the bond and the relationship that the hurdler and the coach has, that communication, um, which is gonna really help that hurdler and determine how far that hurdler goes. Um, what I'll be sharing with you guys is a key. Um, I'm not here to tell you how to coach. I'm telling you the most ultimate route that you know I took that could help you guys. But the way it works is broken up into pieces. So you can take pieces of what we want to discuss today and put that into your own program where, it's, where, it, where it fits. Um, beginner hurdlers start with a healthy physical and mental state of mind. So here's my question for you guys. What should be coached first? Is it A, physical, um, B, psychological, or C, both? Just go ahead and circle your, own, your answer in your book. A little activity. You know, there's, you know, it's, no one's going to be judged here. <laughs> All right. So the answer is both. You want to, uh, you want to coach the physical and the psychological aspect of hurdling at the same time. They go hand in hand. If you miss the psychological part, you're going to cause a lot of injuries on the physical part. If you miss the physical part, you're going to cause a lot of frustration on the psychological part. So, um, which age is the best? Which age? Which age group is the best to start hurdling? Is it 10, 10 to 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18? I think I already gave you the answer. So we'll go ahead and serve you answer. It's okay. You know, no one's going to fail out of hurdling. <laughs> um, the answer to that is 13, 14. Um, I, Stacy is just, she's the, uh, she's 10. I start my hurdlers young um, because I, I feel that I specialize in it. So um, I had the equipment and the time to do it, but I don't recommend it for um, a lot of coaches to start that young. Um, but the preferred age is 13 to 14. Um, there's psychological development. I don't want to get into psycholinguistics, um, but during that, during this period of uh, most um, young athletes at this age, this is the highest peak of their motor skills. So you can take a 13, 14 year old athlete, you can stick them in the weight room, you can speed train them. What's really happening is they will develop their motor skills first before they develop muscle tone. They would develop their motor skills first before they get faster. They're getting faster because their motor skills are improving. So this is a great time for, um, for athletes to learn how to hurdle. In 13, 14, I believe that puts them in middle school, right? Which is, what, seventh and eighth grade? So if you're a middle school coach, I mean, and I'm not, and not to take anything from the high school coach, but this is just a preferred year for um, hurdlers. On that note, if you have a beginning hurdler that's 17, 18, you have a greater challenge because now you have to make up four training years of, of hurdle development. Not saying that it can't be done. A lot of times hurdlers and coaches seek me out and they have like two months, coach, I gotta get my kid to qualify for state. All right, fine, we can do that. But after that, we gotta go double back and you know um, put all the puzzle pieces together. And the way you do that, before anyone can speak a language, they gotta know the vocabulary first. And after they learn the vocabulary, they have to know how to speak it, say, say, say the words, and then they have to understand what what it is that they're saying before they can have a fluent conversation. It's the same thing with hurdles. Before you put your 
hurdle, hurdle you got to teach them the vocabulary, which is skill skill fundamentals. Then you got to teach them how to say say words, say the words, pronounce say the words. Okay, that's skill development. And then they begin to speak sentences fluently. How well they speak those sentences fluently represents rhythm. So if you think about it that way, it'll help you along the line on how you develop your hurdlers and get to understand them better. Um, the, the big mistake. The biggest mistake that, that I, through my experience of consulting with um, coaches and also helping hurdlers, is the first thing that coaches want to do right away is teach their hurdler how to three-step. That's the big mistake that a lot of coaches make. But I feel that um, through my experience, when I'm learning from coaches, this mistake is made because coaches, they just don't know what else to do. What do I do before that? So, um, so today, I'm gonna help you guys develop steps that's going to uh, help you guys get to the point to three-step. Um, so, but having your hurdler three-step immediately, teaching your hurdler how to three-step immediately is like having them write in an essay in a second language with only three weeks of uh, you know learning that language. You're not going to get, you're not going to get a good essay. It's the same results of the hurdles. If you don't teach them the adequate skill development um, rhythm, then the result could be very harmful to the hurdler. So the procedure for coaching um, beginner hurdlers, you're going to see this a lot. Skill fundamentals, skill development, rhythm development, my favorite, mental development. This is your base, and this is your steps. Everything you do with your hurdlers, hurdlers just follow this step. You're going to do a new drill, follow this step, these steps. Skill fundamental, skill development, rhythm, and then mental development. Even if you come up with your own hurdle drill, just follow this system. Um, I was at Grand Valley State on a recruiting um, recruiting visit uh, about two weeks ago, and I was talking to Coach Key, and he was explaining to me these hurdle drills. I'm like, Coach, I got I got to steal this one. <laughs> It's, it won't fit into my program, but I'm sure I'm going to document it, I'm going to save it, and I'll put it in my archives just in case I come up with a hurdler that may have that same issue. And I'm going to pull it out and say, okay, I know exactly what we, need, what we have to do, and I'm still going to follow these steps to introduce that hurdle drill. Here's what I want you guys to understand, and this is going to happen at the end of uh, this presentation. As your hurdler becomes faster, and stronger, coaching becomes harder. As they become faster and stronger, the skill becomes harder. Now we go back to the language. If, if I'm a guy and I'm a 12 second 100 meter sprint, that means my brain is going to process, I have 10, 12 seconds to process this hurdle before I go over it. Okay, the next year, I'm an 11 second 100 meter sprinter. Now I'm faster. Now my brain only has 11 seconds to process this hurdle. The next year, I'm a 10 second 100 meter guy. My brain only has 10 seconds to process this hurdle. So that's what makes hurdling more challenging as the hurdler becomes further advanced is because the brain has to process information faster. Each hurdle is a sentence. So as a, as a hurdler is sprinting through the hurdle, they're actually reading, processing, calculating their trail leg, their lead leg, other opponents in the race, and rhythm plays a huge role in that too. Level one is zero space in between the hurdles. What it does is it slows the race down to walking pace. It allows the brain more time to process, um, to process the body motor skills and challenge the hip mobility within 
um, within the range of motion. Um, while coaching level one, you want to focus on technique actively, and then challenge the hurdler by um, asking them questions. Um, is your right hand on your hip, behind your hip, or away? Level one is for skill fundamentals. You want to level one, what you want to do is you're walking with your hurdler, teach them how to hurt, to walk them. During level one, that's when you build your communication with your hurdler, your own verbal commands. And that's when you focus on skill fundamentals. And it's not a workout. You're critiquing a hunter. Can I, can I have you come up here again? All right, can you do that knee leg again for me, please? Okay, now, pause for a second, come back over. All right, hunter, what I want to instruct you on is your lead leg needs to remain, your ankle has to remain underneath your knee, straight up, okay? When you did your lead leg, was your ankle below, or to the right of your knee, or to the left of your knee? Correct, so it was like this, right? And where should it be? It should be straight, okay? What do you have to do to make sure that your ankle stays below your knee? Okay, what else can you do with your opposite leg? I'll help you out because you're a good guy. Stay on your toes. You got it? So what I would want to see you do is up, over. Got that? Now, did my knee, did my foot stay underneath my knee? Demonstrate. Do you guys agree that knee legs look, look better? How many questions did I ask Hunter? About three or four. The more questions you ask your curler, the more they're engaged, okay? And then if you're at a track meet, you can't get down to the track to get warmed up. So you're working on nonverbal communication, you know? <laughs> so this is the time when you develop your communication and um, and you move forward. But I asked Hunter a lot of questions and distance two hurdles I've already fixed them. Do you understand what you have to do now? So, okay. Um, just hang out over. I don't want you to steal my shine. My shine. <laughs> All right. So, but purple is more complex. So what you're gonna do in level one is you're gonna figure out what challenges that Hunter has. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick three challenges that Hunter has. I'm gonna pick one challenge, challenge with his lead leg, I'll pick one with his trail leg, and I'll pick one with his arms, okay? With his lead leg, it was, you know, pronation. His foot was outside. So from here on out, when I move to the next levels, I have to make sure that his foot remains underneath his knee at all times, okay? All right, whew, Let me make sure I'm stretched out. All right, so level two is um, hurdle scissor action, targets the hip flexors, hip rotator, psoas muscle to strengthen the body posture and quickness off the hurdle. When you're coaching uh, the level two, you wanna teach the scissor action first without the hurdle, so we'll do that. Um, coach technique adamantly. Now, what, when I, when coach technique adamantly, that means if Hunter, here, pretend like I didn't, I didn't coach you. Now, do what you always do, lead leg. Not the correct way, the incorrect way. Okay? Oh, you're doing great. Good. All right, good job. Next person, that's not how you coach technique adamantly. Here's how you coach technique adamantly. Well, again. Stop. Do it again. What can you do better? Going to coach. What else? Show me. You, you coach me. You show me. Show me. Is that right? You think so? You're supposed to know so. When a gun goes off in your ridge, are you going to think so or are you going to know? Do you have time to think? Okay. This is 
see what I mean? So when you coach technique admittedly, you do that by asking your hurdlers questions. It keeps them engaged in the hurdle drill. Now, hey, listen, these hurdle drills are boring. I love hurdling, but coaching level one is probably one of the most boring processes that I have with my hurdlers, even more so with my professional hurdlers, because they're like, do we really? So we bring music. <laughs> we have to get pumped up just to make it through three weeks of level one, but we know we need to do it. But I keep them engaged by, answer, by asking them questions, and then we also watch film on it. So coach technique adamantly, that means you critique every angle, every dorsal flex, every everything. This is where you strive for, per, for perfection on technique, because later, you don't have time to, to, to focus on technique. Once you get past level four, and it's, it's sprinting, now I'm saying, hey, forget about hurdle form. You better know it. You have to take all the hurdle form you have right now, and you have to put that over the hurdle. I need you to sprint, okay? Later on, I'll give you a secret to hurdle. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take Hunter, Hunter, right? Okay, so I need to teach Hunter the scissor action first. Hunter, can you come up here, please? Right? Okay, I need you to have your your right knee leg or a left knee leg? Your left knee leg? Okay. <laughs> All right. So you want to have your left knee forward. I mean, left knee up. Okay. Right hand, left, left hand in your hip. Okay. Right thumb up on your toes. Now, when I say hit, I want you to switch your position as fast as you can to here. You're maintaining your balance. Okay. All right. Hit. Are your hands in your hip? Yeah. Okay. Hit. You see that? This right here can cause a lot of problems. In fact, 14-2, um, 14-6. See that? Okay. 14-2, 14-6. Hear me out. That's this right here allows you to hold all the torque that the hurdle developed. As the hand slips away, you lose torque, and then just to relay a domino, negative domino effect. You got that? All right, so back, All right, hit. Okay, now, scissor action has to be aggressive. Now I'm adding in aggressive, so here's what we want. Got it? All right, hit. Hit. You're all right. Hit. Hit, 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 okay, you got that? All right, so now I'm gonna go double time, which is, okay, hit, ah, oh, not good enough. Hit, now, when you hit, does your heels touch at any point? I think so. You think so? I need you to know so. <laughs> Let's try it again. Hit, hit. Did your heels hit at any point? Yes. <laughs> you see, they're getting more in tune with their body. They know if their heels are hitting. So like doing a race, Hunter should be able to pick up on by hurdle five, oh crap, my heels are hitting. Boom, and at the race, hey, at the hurdle five, you sped up, what'd you do differently? Oh, well hurdle one through five, I was running on my heels and I stood up and that made my race go faster. See, the smarter the hurdle, the more it can communicate. All right, so now we're gonna to go to triple time, which is three. All right, go. Hit. Not good enough, fast, come on. Go. Oh. It's all right, come on. They're not laughing at you. All right. <laughs> Hit. Okay, I'm confused. Okay. Do it three times. Let me help you out. I can't count. One, two, <laughs> three, okay? Oh. One, two, three, one, two, three, okay? Go, hit, hit, ah, see? Yeah. All right, so you wanna coach the rhythm before they get to the hurdle, all right? All right, so you wanna start with your right foot up, 
okay? You want to go double time, which is one, two, but you want to make sure your foot's on the other side of the earth. You got it? So stand a little closer. Hit. Nice. You guys see where this is going? Okay. So let's try it again. Hit. Good. So you want to be all right. All right. So now that, let's start here now. And now you're going to do a double time to get on the other side of the hurdle. So come here. You always want to stay in front of me in the hurdle. In the hurdle okay? So the first one is one, two. This is where it gets hard. Okay? So let the people see what's up. I'll show you first. So we're here. You guys got it? Your turn. Hit. It's hard, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> Try it again. Hit. Okay. Now what I would like for you to do is to put it all together. One, two. One, two. So you're going to start here. One, two, over. One, two, clear. Got it? Come back to this one. You need a lot of patience with your hurdler during this drill. The younger, the better. Week one, be very patient. Hurdlers are going to be flying all over the place. But if you make it fun, you hear his, his cardio is going, you feel it? So the, be very patient week one. You're going to need to spend about four weeks on this drill. Okay? But this is a workout. Like, you know, and this is only four hurdles. I recommend 12. Okay? All right. So we'll keep, we'll keep pressing. So we'll stay up here. So right. for level three is the hurdle rhythm, hurdle rhythm hops, and this is going to answer your question, Coach. Um, Force the hurdle to maximize their power output that separates them from the track to the top of the hurdle to reach optimum core agilities and punch them from the mid-air back to the track. That sounds very confusing. But if you just keep reading it and watch film at the same time, you'll get it. I spent years trying to perfect this sentence. This is the best I can come up with. Um, but um, it gets better if you guys come back to teaching a three-step. Um, I break it down much better than this. But basically what the hurdle hops is for, if you have a hurdler, that hurdle's too high, okay? It's because when you're in the air, the hurdler has to know what to do to get back down to the ground, onto the track. If they don't, the hurdler has to wait until the track comes to them. You see, see where the time is lost? But if they know what to do before they get here, they can you know, pass go and collect $200. Does that make sense? So that's what the hurdle rhythm, um, which orange is for. It takes, you still get a rhythm, um, lower intellectual aspect of this hurdle drill, so it's not a lot of thinking, because they can use momentum to kind of cheat through it. Um, this requires, who has a sheet for orange? What's the spacing for orange? 10 feet. Hmm? 10 feet, what's that in meters? 3.1. Okay. Oh, so I put the feet down there for you guys? You're welcome. Okay. So, <laughs> um, the measurements from those is hurdle to hurdle, not from hurdle to the back of the hurdle, by the way. So it's from hurdle to hurdle. Okay? So, when teaching that, you got to teach them the rhythm hops first before the hurdle. I like this. I like to film this because it just looks funny. Um, okay. 
and then you want to you want to coach rhythm adamantly. This is where you teach them rhythm. When we talk about three step, this is the rhythm that they should feel. Okay, but most hurdles you get in this rhythm. What the hurdler is doing is thinking, how am I going to three step? I, I don't think I can make it. <laughs> That's what's going on in this rhythm. Okay? So this is going to teach them how to, um, what most um, psychologists call it, is chunking, which is taking information and chunking it um, in, 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 in the pieces and allows the brain to process things faster. So this supports that chunking theory. So Hunter, can you come up here, please? All right, so what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna have you go one, two, hop. Got it? Okay, you ready? Go on me. One, two, hop. One, two, hop. Oh, let's do your lead leg. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, I have to like reprogram myself. Okay, start with your lead leg. So, one, two, hop. You got it? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> All right, cool. So, <laughs> uh, let's get rid of this. Okay. Yeah. You left leg is left. All right, so we'll have you go this way. Right, and I'll show you first. Got it? And that's what my nine down the computer truck. So even with I heard of I hope I'm gonna crash. <laughs> what about shorter athletes? Smaller spacing up. Boom. 
Okay, that allows his confidence to gauge where he's supposed to be. What does it look like for the actual right. So you're gonna see low power output, but the higher the hurdle, you're gonna see a greater um, power output. And faster. My trail leg is faster over this height than it is over this height. Like, right? It's log fidget, you know? Um, simple way to understand it. What goes up must come down, right? So if my trail leg goes up really high, I mean, it's gonna come down at the same speed. So when I go over the hurdle, same rhythm. Okay? So it looks like I was slower because I covered more ground. But if you would take a software application and time from my takeoff to my landing, it's the same exact time as that. Okay? Uh, and we'll be able to ask questions about this pretty soon. Um, challenge hurdlers by asking them questions about their technique. So here, you want them to demonstrate their rhythm with their hands but then also ask them questions about their technique. So now you're tapping in a rhythm, and then you're also tapping in, you know, um, what they know.